Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Endeavor. Uh, first of all, addendum just to get out of the way. Uh, for people who didn't watch the, 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 the end game final scoring, I realized when I was doing that that I had lied most of the way through the video. I kept saying, or I said several times that, hey, every time I take one of these chits, it's worth a point at the end of the game. That's not true at all. Um, you lose them. And you can see in the end of the game scoring, I talked more about it. But just wanted to make that clear. That was a goof. I said that repeatedly throughout, but they are not worth points. They are not implicitly worth points or directly worth points at the end of the game. But anyway, enough about that. Again, you can watch the end game scoring where I actually did a full final tally and see how it works to hear more about that. Ah! So, the game itself is great. Um, you know, uh, so much to pay attention to, so much going on, so many different avenues to focus on. Um, you know, the buildings you get really define what you're good at, and that really defines what you're going to fight for. Shipping lanes versus occupation in Europe versus foreign markets, trying to get more contracts, um, ignoring contracts, trying to go for more occupations, um, warfare, trying to take away key strategic points from other players. So much going on, uh, you know. In Gen, I really enjoy, it. and and it's a for the record, it's a fantastic two-player game. The official variant is awesome. Gen, I enjoy it quite a bit. Wouldn't change a thing about it. Now, I will say, um, when I was doing the run through, I actually I forgot about you know using the white player's move several times. And that can be a problem when you happen to be filming a run through for two players while holding a camera in your hand. What Jen and I do to ensure that we remember is basically on our turns, we always take a bunch of the white tokens and literally put them on our buildings as a reminder. That, right, when I put a worker here, don't forget, there's a white worker, there's a, you know, or whatever the dummy color you choose is, there's a dummy worker here too. Don't forget, you have to place him also. We just do that and it's easy. We very rarely forget. I know you saw me forget several times in the video, but it's really not very fiddly at all. It's pretty straightforward. Sometimes the choice you make for the dummy is really kind of immaterial because the board's so wide open, but other times it can be a game changer um, if you just happen to get the dummy. And you saw in the extended a couple times, that one time when Jen got this white worker down here and prevented me from becoming um, governor of South America, that was a big deal. That was a really big move. And you know, a couple other ones popped up as well. So the dummy player works fantastically. However, the dummy player, it's interesting, actually um, gives you more opportunities to screw your opponents over than you would have in a normal game. It gives you more tactical options. And for some players who might find that you know, a bit too harsh, uh, for our Jen and me, it's on the edge, but you know we accept it, it's okay. But there's another really good two-player variant where instead of controlling the dummy player all throughout the game, as part of setup, you just cover up half of the shipping, I forget what it is exactly. Uh, you cover up most of the shipping lanes with the dummy player markers, and you just cut off half the board. And I've never played that way, but apparently that works really well too. It makes it much simpler, and also turns the game more into a multiplayer solitaire style game. There's a, there's less of an avenue for um, you know making brinksmanship style moves that might really mess with your opponent's plans by using the dummy player. But anyway, that's all I'll say about that. Other than to say that yeah, this is a fantastic two player game. It should really say two to five on the box. You know, it's a cry and shame that it doesn't because it's a great, great two player game. And um, with that other variant, you can kind of tune it to your level of your, your preferred aggression level as well. So that's really, really nice. Um, you know, in the game itself, I don't really have anything down to say about it all. Everything from the first moments all the way up to final scoring is very, very exciting. And really, I think about the only other thing to talk about is the, the uh, slavery issue. Which obviously I have talked about quite a bit over the course of the game because it's a big part of the game. There's no way around it. And I mean, I appreciate that for some people it's going to be a real turnoff. They'll just dismiss the game, maybe even out of hand. And you know, I don't blame them. You know, obviously it's it's a very sensitive subject. And you know, because it's it's a dark, it's the it's the darkest spot on mankind's collective soul throughout all of human history. You know, the you know the rampant institutionalization of slavery that was you know going on at this time, all the, at other times, at all times throughout human history. It's always happened. It's happening today. Um, and I can certainly understand why people would take offense at a game like this that you could you could um, you could choose to look at it as the game is trying to make slavery fun. It is trying to turn it into a, a fun act, game-like activity. And now myself, that's not what I think is happening. I do think that's worth talking about a little bit. 
I greatly respect and admire the designers for, first of all, putting slavery in, because it would have been so easy for them to just whitewash history like Puerto Rico does. You know, a lot of people say, oh, there's all slaves in Puerto Rico, completely ignores slavery. There are no slaves in Puerto Rico. They completely ignore everything about the slave trade in that game. They are colonists. They are not slaves coming over on those boats. It just makes no thematic sense to think of it otherwise. And so this game could have completely ignored slavery also, and still been a really, really great game. But they did put it in. And they put it in in a way that really creates interesting moments of tension in the game that really mimic the reality of what life was like. In this run through I just did, where I had actually gone into slavery early, and near the end of the game, Jen decided to take it upon herself to abolish slavery for two reasons. One, because it's the moral thing to do. It's the right thing to do. I mean, obviously, you know, that's, that's unassailable. But two, it made sense for her in terms of gameplay because by me going into slavery, if Jen had been able to manage the ab abolition of slavery, it would have been a significant, it would have made the game actually very, very close instead of it being a blowout for me because I went heavy into slavery and was unopposed. Um, and really, I think the core mistake Jen did is she waited one round too long before she tried to go for the abolition of slavery and it became impossible because I was able to literally fight to keep slavery alive because it would have been too much of a blow to the economy of my empire. And, I mean, to me, it's, you know, the first time that ever happened to us when we were playing for real, it was mind-blowing that I found myself in that situation. That I found myself in the equivalent situation of the American South before the Civil War. That, you know, wh whether they thought slavery was right or wrong was immaterial. They had to do it because their entire economy was based on it. Um, you know, and, you know, and, and see, here's the thing. Um, I think it's a, a game like um, Freedom, the Underground Railroad, which uh, gets a lot of praise. It came out last year. You know, it takes a, a frank, harsh look at you know the reality of the Underground Railroad and the, and the hardships that you know um, slaves that were trying to escape went through and all that. And you know, it gets a lot of respect and admiration. And I think it's great. It's a great game. I will be doing a run through for it pretty soon. But almost to a certain extent, it feels like it kind of takes the easy way out because what's the theme of um, of uh, Underground Railroad? Slavery is bad. Okay, I get it. That's not actually telling me anything. That's not actually helping me grow as a person or try to understand the reality of how the world works. The first time I was playing Endeavor and I was actually actively trying to prevent the abolition of slavery, which is an unthinkable thing to me, it put me in the, um, in the mind of, of, of the other side of the equation. And I think that is a hugely important thing that people always need to do. It's not enough to just say, yeah, why did World War II happen? Oh, because Hitler was evil, or because he was a frustrated artist, um, or because he just hated, you know, it's, it's not simple enough just to say that. It's not simple enough just to say, why did 9-11 happen? Oh, because the terrorists hate our freedom. That's it. That's all you need to know. No, it is very important to look beyond the surface level gut reaction and to truly try to understand the other side of the equation. Because if you don't, if society as a whole does not truly understand what would put a nation into a position where they are actively trying to prevent the abolition of slavery, if you don't do that as a, as a society, you'll never truly move beyond it. And that's why I think something like Endeavor that actually you know, it puts you in that position, makes you truly understand what it feels like, why you would find yourself in that, that you could put aside the realities of the horror that you are creating, you know, the indignities, the suffering and all that, because you need to, because you need to, you know, succeed, you need to feed your people, you need to bring glory to your empire and all that is amazing. And that's why I think Endeavor deserves so much respect for not ignoring it, not whitewashing it, but actually treating it, treating the subject matter with respect, treating the subject matter of slavery, and you know, not supporting slavery, not sla saying slavery is good at all, but just trying to explain, look, this is why it can happen. It's important that we understand that, that we truly understand that, so that it won't happen again. And that is how I choose to look at a game like Endeavor that includes slavery as a core gameplay mechanic in the game. It is in no way, shape, or form glorifying slavery. It is not making slavery fun. It is making the choices around slavery relatable. It is um, allowing you to see that a slaver is a human being and he has reasons for doing what he's doing. It, it, it's, it's unforgivable what he's doing, but it, it, that's not enough. 
That is not enough to just to dismiss somebody off hand and say they're evil. Okay, let's just put evil in a box and that'll solve all the problems. That's not enough. You have to understand the evil. You have to find ways to ensure it doesn't happen again. And that's what Endeavor does. And that's why I think it's an amazing game. And that's why I was very, very happy to do a run through for it today for you guys. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there because I can hear Jen is trying to Skype me. Okay, she stopped now, I'll call her back. And um, uh, mistake, errors, all that stuff. Sorry, I'm sure I made quite a few. I'm sure I forgot the white player several times. And I'm sure Jen probably didn't lose by quite as much as it looks like she did because I probably forgot to do some move somewhere along the way. But still, as always, this run through is to let you know what the game feels like. Not, um, you know, not necessarily give you an exact, perfect, error-free um, de you know, uh, demonstration of the rules. So, that's it folks. Thanks for watching. Comments, questions, concerns, as always, let me know. Do you think I'm crazy about the slavery thing? I, I don't know. I'm wearing my heart on my sleeve here. That's how I feel. Um, and again, my hat's off to Carl DeVeser and uh, Jared Gray. You guys have done an amazing thing. It is such a shame this game is, is, has disappeared from shelves. This game should be um, on the shelf of every civic study classroom in the world. This should be something that all kids when they are you know teenagers when they get old enough to actually start questioning the way the world is they should all play this they should all look at the world from a new perspective so they can better understand the world and in so doing make the world a better place that's endeavor thanks for watching everybody talk to you later have a very good day uh, bye bye